Hey everybody, we're here. Uh, been out in the yard working, so now uh, we're gonna do our Bible reading. Got a little bit done. Uh, tried to light a uh, burn pile out in the backyard, but it's way too wet for it to light from where all the rain we've been getting. But I tried, I had it, it was a cool evening, so it was an evening I wanted to see if I could get it going. It just wouldn't. But we're gonna go ahead and do the next chapter in Ezekiel, which would be 28. Let me get a drink here real quick. Because I was working. I'm trying to grow sweet bell peppers from scratch and some Roma tomatoes. I started them from seeds and they sprouted good. And then they, they sprouted, they were getting longer. And then they just stopped completely growing. I put them outside and they haven't grown anymore. So I thought maybe it was the soil. So I just got some fresh soil out of the ground and mixed it with some of the potting soil that I had and then mixed it with uh, some of the dirt that I've been carrying out of the basement so I could get like just a mixture to see how that does. And then I put it out of the little containers I had trying to get them to come from seeds, put it in a five gallon bucket to see if more room would help. But I don't know. It's the first time I've ever tried to grow anything from other than the few little flowers we did in like grade school uh, but I was wanting to learn how to do peppers and tomatoes so I can make my own salsa uh, but so far with the amount of money I've spent trying to grow these and it's they've been growing now for about four months it's not cost effective so worth a try right but uh, let's get to chapter 28 Okay, the caption above chapter 28 is the Prince of Tyrus rebuked. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the Prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By the great wisdom and by thy traffic, hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beautiful, or the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the death of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God, but thou shalt be a man, and no God. In the hand of him that slayeth thee, thou shalt die the death of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers, for I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, topaz, and the diamond. The barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald. And the carbuncle. Carbuncle? Hmm. And gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Okay, we just read 1 through 13, and there are some captions here. I'm going to read the first one. Uh, this is from the Study Bible. The third oracle was directed against the Prince of Tyre, who at the time was Ethbel the third, 591 slash 90 to 573 to 72 B.C. His sin was his claim to the divine. He said, I am a God. But God said, 
thou art a man. Verse 2. Because of his presumption, the prince would be killed by his enemies, thus proving his mortality. Verses 8 and 9. All right. The next caption is for verses 11 through 19, so we'll get through 19 and read it. All right, verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Something popped in my head. I don't know if I'm accurate. Um, is he talking about the devil here? Cast thee from thee, a cherub, O covering cherub. Um, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon thy holy mountain of God. For some reason, it's popping into my head that that's the devil. Uh, it might be completely off. I have no clue why. It might be completely right. I don't remember reading this before, but let's just see. You know, they might, and they may just be talking about a land or uh, the, the princes of Tyree there or something. But to me, uh, the chosen cherub, uh, the devil was one of the, I guess, more premier, uh, for lack of a term, because I can't think of another one right now. Kind of like Michael, kind of like Gabriel, one of the, the upper echelon in the rankings of the angels in heaven, from what I can understand. And uh, so maybe that was why he was the chosen cherub. And he was music. Yeah, he was very musical. He had instruments that came forth from him. And here's the thing. Um, a lot of people wonder, or they don't really wonder, they defend a lot of music, not realizing or understanding some of the lyrics that are said in the songs. I didn't. I used to not. I used to think there was nothing wrong with any country western tune. I used to uh, sing certain things. There were rap songs, heavy metal songs, uh, pop songs. Pretty much just about anything Beyonce would sing or Madonna or things like that that I just never really felt comfortable with. Uh, there were some I, I sang and I listened and I tried to like them. I tried to act cool about them. But the more you listen to the lyrics, the more, even though I tried to act like I liked them, I, it did not feel right with my spirit, if that makes sense. Um... I used to always sing that Garth Brooks song, Shameless, because he sang it so good. And then you listen to the lyrics, and you realize, that's not good content. And then you listen to the song that summer, and then you listen to the lyrics, and you're like, should a Christian sing that one? It's because, um, I know this is a Bible verse you see all the time that is written down, or or on coffee mugs, or on a plaque on the wall, or a poster. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. There's more to the verse. You want to find it, find it in scriptures. But that alone, the words you speak have meaning. That's why they all, there's many places in scripture where it always tells you to watch your tongue, to bite your, you know, to, you know, the words that come from your mouth. It's like the power of the spoken word. Um, it's just, there's so many times in the Bible, and my mind is just not remembering them right now. I do apologize for that, but they're in there. And to be honest with you, it'd be better for you to go read and find them. So, uh, just type, go to Google. Uh, even though they don't want you to know righteous stuff, you can, they still will direct you to where it says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And it, it's something, and those who, it's life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who heed it will eat its fruit, or something like that, is the, the way that it goes. I used to have it completely memorized, but I'm just mentally tired tonight, and I do apologize for that. But, it's in there. Uh, but, this is a good example 
and and music with the and that might not even be what this is meaning here but it popped in my head and therefore i feel like i should have said it um there is music i absolutely love i have stopped listening to i garth burke used to be one of my favorites uh there he bill i always liked billy dean better than garth and then it switched and i tried to convince myself i was a bigger garth burke's fan than billy dean but no billy dean's my favorite i, I like billy dean better than garth uh, especially because billy Dean don't shove political agendas down your throat um i believe one way garth believes another way however that's i still liked him because i liked his music and i liked him as an artist but some things come out recently from him where he basically called me a name because i don't agree with his political stance therefore i'm about done with garth burks altogether not because i'm canceling somebody just because i'm just at the point now where i care more about what god has to say and less about what some millionaire has to say especially one that acts holier than thou. so but let's get back here O covering cherub from the midst of the stones of fire thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore, will I... Anytime you see the word therefore in the scriptures, what do you do? You look and see what it's there for. Okay. Therefore... Why is it here? I will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to the ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. All right, let's go back. We're going to figure out what it was here. All right. Uh, 28, 11 through 19. The change of address C from the Prince of Tyre to the King of Tyre in verse 12 has prompted much discussion. However, there seems to be little doubt that Satan Thank you, Holy Spirit. Little doubt that Satan is in the view in these verses. As the real power behind the wicked society and government of Tyre, this is evident from several considerations. He is called the anointed cherub, verse 14. The word cherub is used in the Old Testament only to refer to angelic creatures. The name of one of the chief gods of Tyre was Melkart, which means king of the city. It would have been clear to all of Ezekiel's listeners that the deity supposed to exist behind the earthly ruler was in mind. The change of listeners that the deity supposed to, okay, the change of addressee from Prince of Tyre to King of Tyre indicates that someone other than the earthly ruler is in view. And four, finally, Paul, Paul, ah, okay, it's uh, referencing something that happens in the New Testament. Gotcha. Okay. Paul seems to have this passage in mind when enlisting the qualifications for an elder. He stipulates that the elder be not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. 1 Timothy 3, 6. As a descriptive passage on Satan, the content reveals more about his fall than any other. He served near the presence of God. Verse 14 was perfect, became guilty of the sin of pride, began to deal in the iniquities trade, verse 18, and is therefore destined for judgment, verses 16, 18, and 19. The statement, thou wast perfect, till iniquity was found in thee. Verse 15, is the closest the Bible ever comes to explaining the origin of sin. 
It began when one of God's previously perfect creatures rebelled against him. Okay. Caption above verse 20. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zidon and prophesy against it. And say, Thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall have ex executed judgments in her, and shall be sanctified in her. For I will send into her, pre her, her pestilence and blood into her streets, and the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword, upon her on every side, and they shall know that I am the Lord, and there shall be no more a pricking briar unto the house of Israel, nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, that despise them, and they shall know that I am the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, when I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people among whom they are scattered, and shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen, then shall they dwell in their land that I have given to my servant Jacob, then, and they shall dwell safely therein, and shall build houses, and plant vineyards. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence, when I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. That's the end of chapter 28. There is one small verse left in the study Bible. Let's see what it says. Okay, Sidon, another Phoenician city, was 20 miles north of Tyre. Sidon's sins were much the same as those of Tyre, and therefore are not enumerated here. However, God promises judgment on them in the form of pestilence and sword. The final prophecy against a foreign power consists of seven oracles directed against Egypt and Pharaoh. Each oracle begins with the expression, The word of the Lord came unto me. All seven oracles are in chronological order except for 29. Ah, I'm starting to read the stuff for 29. Let's not read that. Okay. However, God promises judgment on them in the form of pestilence and sword. So it's just it's God pronouncing judgment on Sidon, another Phoenician city. Okay. Well, that is chapter 28. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for the time we get to be able to just get the things done and to do the work around the house we need to do, Lord. Do the pretty weather, the cooler weather. Even though it is August, we got a cooler evening. It's not often we get these in August, Lord. So we thank you for that. We praise you and we honor you. Continue to be with our country. Watch over them. Allow the rulers of this country to... Just remember what this country is founded upon. Quit using their current power as a way to attack their political opponents, Lord. We pray for truth in all situations to be revealed. And we pray for the attacks on the people who are just their political opponents to end. It's something I've never seen in my time in paying attention to politics. They've always bickered. They've always battled. But there was always a little bit of decorum. And sadly, there doesn't seem to be any more. We have the most corrupt regime that I can think of or even have knowledge of in my lifetime. And the, the one before the last president was very corrupt, and we know there have been many others, Lord, and we're starting to understand that it's not just the right or the left in this country, Lord. We're starting to understand that there's a good old boys club, a, a political powerhouse uniparty that is just wants the power and doesn't care about the little ones because it's, it's obvious the one that's in power and the head of the Republican side in the Senate, it's obvious that he doesn't have Republican ideals at heart, Lord. It's obvious he just has personal agenda. But Lord, just be with our country and watch over us. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. We thank you for everything. Just drop the scales from people's eyes who just think it's okay. They can just watch local news or CSN, C, C, CNBC or MSNBC or CNN or whatever. Even Fox News ain't even as trustworthy, ain't that trustworthy anymore. Because all they they're a twenty four hour news cycle and all they are about is just just 
fanning the flames, getting people riled up. Once again, pushing the ill-defined term of race, racism and racist, Lord. You created us all in your image. We are Trinitarian beings. We are the human race. The race is human. If pe And we just thank you. I always joke if people are fans of the, the cartoon X-Men, then call us homo sapiens, I, I guess. I don't know. It's a joke. It's not literal. But, Father God, we know that just because there's a different ethnic group or people group or cultural group, that it doesn't change the fact that we are the singular, same race, Lord. You created us in your image. We go back to Noah, and then we go back to Adam. We thank you for your blessings, Lord. We love you. We praise you, and we honor you. In Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. All right, everybody. We'll see you later. God bless. Have a great day. And I'm going to go ahead and get a shower because I stink. I've been working outside. Um, and I'm going to hang out with, my, with many. So... Uh, we'll go inside, get something to drink, because I am completely dry to the point where my throat feels like it's sticking together. So, we're going to go in. We're going to get some drink. Hopefully, I lost some weight this week. Uh, Weigh-ins tomorrow. I have not ate a whole lot. I did eat a couple pieces of fudge, just because my fudge is the best. So, uh, I had some extra. I took some to work. I left some of the peanut butter here. And... I've had a couple pieces each night, so that's it. Just and and they're like one inch squares, so that's all I've had. So hopefully that's not enough to hurt it too bad on my diet. But um, I haven't been as active this week either because it's rained almost every night. So or it rained while I was at work, so it was too wet to do anything out here. So that's one of the reasons that I haven't done as much this week. So I may not have lost anything. As long as I didn't gain anything, I'm good. But uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow. God bless you. Uh, chapter 28, tomorrow 29. And we'll get through this book of Ezekiel. It's been a difficult one for me. Um, that's why I'm reading the study Bible. Uh, so, And I will have to read this one again. It won't be on the, on here because it's already on here. Um, only certain books, whenever I feel led by the Spirit to redo them, kind of like when I redid Acts, will I do that? Um We'll probably be doing that with John. I'm thinking about, I don't know if I will attempt it because I've never read that much in one sitting, but I might try to sit down and in one stream read through the whole book of John. Um, may not be the Gospel of John the first time. I might start with a littler book and try that, but it's something that I think could be cool, and it might be a way I do Ephesians. Not sure, but stay tuned. If you all want to leave something down below to let me know what you might like for me to do there. Um, I'm still working on some other things that I'd like to be able to do on this channel. I'm game planning mostly because I'm trying to figure out how to do it and when to do it. So, but uh, love y'all. See you soon. God bless.